right, it is 5.30. I will call the meeting of public works to order. Uh, start with the roll call. Alder Bellinger? Here. Alder Ramey? Here. Alder Peters? Here. And Alder Rust is uh, excused. Uh, we will start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. It's all right. Uh, well, uh, we have some guests. I suppose we should probably do an introduction. Uh, I'm Dean Decker, uh, Alder from District 6, Chair of the Public Works Committee. I'm Dan Peterson, Alder from uh, District 3. I'm Angela Ramey, Alder of District 5. I'm Liz Majerus with the Legal Department. John Bellinger, Alderman, <clears throat> District 2. Kevin Jump, City Engineer. Travis Peterson, Public Works Director. Mike Wilmes, Public Works. Jill Kerlin, Public Works. Uh, Rachel Massey, Mr. If Clark. Go ahead. Uh, uh, sure. Dave, Dave Smith, resident of Sheboygan. Okay. Here because I thought some of the usual suspects weren't going to show up, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve Jorgensen, resident of Sheboygan. Uh, Brian Kelly, also a resident here. Warren Waddell, pastor at Fountain Park Global Methodist Church. Okay, welcome, welcome, thank you. Uh, we'll go right on then to uh, number five, approval of minutes from July 23rd, 2024. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Turn one side, those are approved. Uh, item number six, resolution number 49-24-25, resolution authorizing entering into a professional services agreement with R.A. Smith Incorporated for design and engineering services for upgrades to the Uptown, Uptown Parklet on St. Clair Avenue. Uh, I'll start out with uh, the, the, the go through and then we can, I'll, I'll open it up to some discussion. Okay. So who's gonna start? Okay. Uh, so, uh, per council request in 24, uh, as a follow-up to a, 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 a vibrant spaces grant that the city applied for, um, which was awarded to the city, uh, council had requested uh, to go out for bid for an estimate on um, planning and design of Uptown Parklet becoming more of a permanent feature. Um, the at one we received one submittal on that request RP, um, that came in from Ari Smith and it totaled one hundred eighty nine and a half thousand uh, dollars. Based upon that, um, we I mean we really don't have a recommendation either way as to whether to accept or not. All right. Uh, first, I'll ask our from our. Right, yeah, I have a couple questions. So I'm curious about the history of this. When was this originally proposed, and where did that proposal come from? Does anybody know that? I can speak to that. Yes. Okay. So the parklet was born in 2021, the product of the pandemic yeah. and our need for outside uh, gathering spaces. Uh, it had. Um, some attention from council starting in 2023. Uh, in January of 23, staff was directed by council resolution to apply for a vibrant spaces grant, which they did, and they were awarded the $50,000. In March of 24, by resolution, the council uh, advised staff that it was their sense that they desired to make the Uptown Parklet a permanent feature within the city. And at that point, staff started soliciting for designing that feature. Um, and then uh, what you have before you is now the, the single resolution for designing a more permanent feature there. Um, but the parklet has only been around for about three years. Uh, when it was initially installed, uh, it was between Paradigm Coffee and the 8th Street Ale House. Uh, the 8th Street Ale House has had a change of ownership and I believe it's going to be continued to be used as a, a food and beverage establishment under the new ownership. Um, it gets taken down during the winter season to allow for snow removal. We have Jersey barricades that um, block off that portion for, tra for vehicular traffic during the summer season. Um, and it is open to any member of the public, whether they are 
um, customers at an adjacent business or whether they just meet somewhere, meet there to, you know, as a gathering space, it's treated just like a little park would be. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So the grant, um, I'm looking to you now, but the grant was for 50,000. 50,000 to be used for the parklet. We could use it for construction or installation of equipment and features, things like that. If we don't use it for the parklet, we lose the 50,000? Correct. Thank you. John, go ahead. I spoke to Caitlin Krieger regarding this issue, and she said that this is going to be more like 230 to 250,000 uh, when it's all said and done. No equipment is involved with within this, um, and I, I have a, I have a problem with an empty building on one side. You've got a funeral home on one corner. You know, co-op on the and I went by there twice today, this late this afternoon. Empty, not one person, and arguably one of the nicest days that we have. And to be looking at redoing Fountain Park, one block away, and putting significant amount of money into that, <clears throat> I have it. You know, regardless of the fifty thousand dollar grant, I have a huge problem spending this kind of money for a, a one block little thing for you know, a couple months out of the year. Um, I just have an issue with, with Caitlin just giving a number. Do you have any kind of reason where, why, why it, it doubled and what this says? Well, she said, I, no, she, she said that it, it's going to be more than the 189,000. Because I said, I, I asked her about this. I asked the same question that yeah. you asked about the grant uh -huh. and, and what was included, you know, and um, if this was just, you know, $180,000 on top of the 50, and she said it's going to be close to 230 to 250. And I, I can speak to that a little bit. So this resolution, this contract is only for designing. Uh, implementation would have its own costs associated. And so, the, the level of those costs mm -hmm. will be dictated by the design that council chooses. So with regard to this contract, you could set parameters for the consultants to work within that could impact the bottom line. Um, there are other ways to utilize the funding from the grant for this parklet without incurring those costs associated with permanent installation. Uh, some of the things that would be potentially at play if you made this a permanent year-round um, facility would be stormwater infrastructure, uh, street regrading, other types of um, access points for pedestrians, access points for service vehicles, if we're going to offer this as a, a space for you know, reservations, events, that sort of thing. Uh, so all of that would be contemplated in the final decision, the final design decision. Uh, but this contract is simply for the design. Right, so all those that you just mentioned are costs over and above this, yes. and we only got one bid. Correct. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. To me, this seems, um, and I am I am an advocate for outdoor spaces and public spaces and, and, and that sort of thing, and um, I have utilized this space uh, in the summertime, and I live very close to there, and I, I will say, I will echo what, Alder uh, Bellinger said is that, you know, it's it seems at least to me in my cursory review of it that it's not really being utilized um, that much. And I think to me, I, I was also looking at the fact that uh, H.A. Ale House was, was out of business and whether or not the business to the south of this parklet would even want something like that. I know that they had originally kind of agreed about it and, and so I, I didn't know if that would hinder any potential business that would be located to the south of it. I guess one of the questions I also have is like, once this is said and done, so we've got, there's different stages to this contract and, and it, it, I got 187,500, but my math is probably incorrect. That's just for kind of implementing the plan and potentially I my understanding is some of these tasks that are outlined on page 10, we would, maybe take over as, as the city, right? I mean, some of it has to do with construction managers and, and that sort of thing. And I don't know if that's... Potential. Potential. So um, I guess 
you know, I, I look at this too, is like, what is this going to cost the city to maintain on a, on a yearly basis? Uh, especially during the winter months, um, what would be the plan for this? If we had a structure there, is there going to be snow removal? Remo you know, is it going to be, and I'm, people probably don't have an idea how that's going to work out at this point in time. Um, I mean, the way this is kind of written at this point in time, I hate to say it, but I, I'm not really in favor of it. And I've also listened to some of the comments that were made at the Common Council meeting and and uh, from some of my local constituents, and they're not necessarily in favor of this. I think it's a great space in the summertime. I just have a hard time seeing this being utilized in the wintertime. To which I would say that's the point, right? We're getting it designed mm -hmm. so to, to, to be utilized year round. So like, it's not, we're not saying we're passing to keep it exactly as it is. We're saying what, what could it be? If and to be more used. So when, I, when you guys say it's not being used, well, what if it was designed to be used? What if it was more user friendly? What if there was potential of activating that space? We we heard not too long ago at, at our DPW meeting that the number one, I don't want to misquote, but an, an issue that we have in this community is there is no outdoor things to do during the winter. What if it could be a skating rink? What if I'm just throwing it out there, that it is something that could be activated. And I would say that the restaurant, it, it is now, yeah, 8th Street is closed, but it has been purchased by another restaurant. And I just have a hard time believing that any restaurant would not want the option of having outdoor seating. I cannot speak for the owner, but that's all I'm saying. So I don't know, there's potential. So yes, like right now, is it being used to the maximum? No, but that's the point. What if we put time and resources into making it a really great place to use? Um, I guess we're going to let uh, Chris finish up on the committee and then we'll go to the public. So. I guess to that argument, I will say that when this was originally decided or, or discussed that uh, a lot of the current plans, specifically with respect to Fountain Park and D-Land Park and the marina, a lot of those things hadn't kind of come into play to the point where I feel like this parklet if we were to do some of these things that are outlined in here, they're talking about a stage, a building with a 40 to 60 foot footprint, a roller rink, synthetic ice rink, and associated amenities. Those are all the exact same amenities that we're talking about doing at D-Land Park and, mm -hmm. and Fountain Park. And so I wonder whether or not there's any real ad advantage to, to making this a permanent structure that potentially could have redundant amenities. Yeah. I'm gonna ask Liz real quick. What is the time frame that we have to use this if we if we put this on hold for say six months or something like that because we wanted to see what's what our design or what we do with with um, with uh, Fountain Park say uh, what is our what is our time frame that we have to use this? Yeah, good question. Uh, the grant money, the Vibrant Spaces grant, is specific to this portion of city property. Yeah. There are ways we could use the funding to support the space in its current form mm -hmm. and utilize that money uh, that money needs to be spent by the end of this year okay. the design uh, there is no I mean if we if we set aside that grant money if we were just looking at this in isolation there mm -hmm. would be no no deadline by which we needed to make decisions but the grant money has to be used by the end of this year correct okay <clears throat> John, you know I would just like to you know, echo some of the things that, that Dan had to say too. And um, um, Angela, you make, you make some good points, uh, but I think the cost of 189 and then what what um, Caitlin has said is going to be more than that. Um, I just don't think it warrants that with Fountain Park and with, like Dan said, with, with what's going on at the marina too. Um, and then I think wasn't the Smith Brothers, wasn't that like $240,000? I mean, you know, for to have, you know. Smith Group for the Deland Park design? Yeah. Was it, was I, it, wasn't, I mean, so I, I just think this is a, a ton of money for a small space and, and you know, and with a block away with, with Fountain Park. Give me one second, I can give you an answer to that. While you're looking, 
<laughs> while you're doing all these things, I'm going to put something else on. So you're saying that we could use the end of the year, the $50,000 to do something in that space. Like I'm, that's all. I'm yeah. like, can we like can we like yeah, we brainstorm could've... something? Let's use the fifty grand. You know, if, if it's not a permanent parklet, is there something that we could do? Yeah, my understanding is that we can use it for construction and installation of this parklet to activate it. So we could use it. And I, I, I'm sorry, the staff person that is fully knowledgeable on this isn't available. But my understanding is that we can use this money for things like benches, tables improved barricades, things like that. Lighting, portable stage. Lighting, that, portable that, that, stage. That can be brought in you know, every year and taken down. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it, it, it's okay if we put that money towards temper, like if we if we kept it as a summer only. That's my understanding, yeah. Uh, to Alder Bellinger's question, uh, $245,000 was the letter form proposal for the Smith Group initial design. I'd have to go back into that contract and see if we have benchmarks that we would have to pay for additional design services, but just out of the gate, that's what I see. And I think, I mean, that's a significantly more robust project, again, for that kind of, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I'd like to open it up. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Um, just, just since Fallen Park being talked about, mm -hmm. um, so at this point we were working with architecture and that's that was only a, a schematic design mm -hmm. you know sure. and that was six just over sixteen thousand uh, dollars just today i received just kind of like an estimate as if we go all the way to right to where we're going to start building mm -hmm. it we're talking the same numbers 190 to 200 000. that's a lot larger space Fountain park is a lot, lot larger space yeah. for the same for you know mm -hmm. i mean you're, you're talking probably 10 times the space almost probably. So, uh, I'm going to open it up to, uh, to, to, to see for keep your breath, keep your things brief. But uh, um, yeah, so uh, I'm part of a group called Triboygan Active Transportation. Um, mm -hmm. There's talk about it's not being used. We use that every month to host um, this bike ride, critical mass bike ride. Um, we typically see about 40 to 60, somewhere in that range. Um, people show up, we use the parklet as sort of a, a launching and an ending point mm -hmm. to these rides. And we do those through December. We even do, like we do a Santa ride where okay. we all dress up as Santas, go through. So we would use that space. Um, I'm sure other groups that form that might not necessarily have like a building to meet, like I'm sure they could use that space. Um, in terms of being in winter, um, it, just the wind off the lake. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people would necessarily want to spend a whole lot of time right on the lake shore in winter with a bunch of wind, you know, whereas mm -hmm. it's a little bit more sheltered there. So um, that's sort of our perspective. We would use it. I don't want to speak too much for them, but sure. like we would use it. It would be used um, for sure. And then um, in addition, like I'm sure it costs the city money to take down what's already there. I don't think it hurts. Like we would still use it in its current form, mm -hmm. even if it just wasn't taken down. So in, in my perspective, why waste the money tearing it down, putting it back up, sort of taking those trees, I'm sure that um, puts some stress on them being moved around. So my perspective, at least just keep it permanent how it is. It would be great to make it like better. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Um, looking at, can I point out a few things on your map here? Sure. Go on. Go on. Um, so here's an apartment complex. Mm -hmm. um, here's their parking spot here that they rent from us. This is Fountain Park Global Methodist Church parking yeah. area. Um, and right now we have problems because they can't get beyond here in the summertime. So this to here is closed off. Mm -hmm. uh, garbage trucks can't get in there. Mm -hmm. um, delivery trucks have to find some way to turn around to get in here to deliver to Paradigm or Ale House. Um, right now, we are seeing an increased number of people illegally parking in our, in our lot for going over to this event. We have it posted that it's only parked by permission only and people are constantly violating that. Um, another thing is you've got a green space right here. Why not use that? I believe that's, that's, privately, that's privately owned. owned. That's privately owned. Correct. Privately owned. 
and it was up for sale for the last three years. Um, another thing is that down here, just to have a picture, there is the alleyway that goes between our parking lot and our church. We have increased amount of uh, activity of that alleyway where people are streaming from 8th Street to 9th Street because they can't get through up here. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening down in, what's happened down in the south side of 8th Street, just south of Pennsylvania Avenue, is that the uh, restaurants and stores down there are de have developed the sidewalk. All of this, there's no grass in here anymore. This is all sidewalk. And what they've done is that there are fences along the edge with openings for pedestrian traffic. And they've got tables and chairs out here. So the street is still open. And it's my understanding that not too long ago, uh, that part of 8th Street had been closed off as a temporary parklet. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work because there was no traffic down there. People could not get down there to the restaurants uh, without parking in a variety of different places. Um, the, uh, the issue of wintertime, uh, the gentleman that just left said they would use that. If you're gonna put up a permanent spot here, um, this street doesn't get plowed as it is in the, in the wintertime. It's one of the last streets to get plowed. And uh, I'm not sure why, it's just the way it is. Uh, we have a number of people on the northeast side of Sheboygan that come in and use this to park in our parking lot. We have two entrances here and here. Uh, again, it's one block from Fountain Park. Can we upgrade Fountain Park to be used for those things that have been stated? Uh, it, it just seems to be a whole lot of money for a quarter of a block. And is this is the street going to be torn up and put grass in there? I mean, is that the plan to make a green space? So th those are the questions that, that we have. And our concern is just mostly the traffic on in the uh, the alleyway because when our older congregants come out, you know, cars screaming through, there's somebody's going to get hit. Well, um, I would like to see a little bit more from like possibly from the police department as far as you know, like traffic study and things like that. Uh, just a little bit of an idea, of, some kind of an idea of, of that before we would go further. Um, I would like to, I would like to see us uh, table this and, and bring it back maybe in a couple months or you know in a month or so, just to you know, kind of as, as a, a rethought before we go that thing, you know. Uh, but that's uh, my suggestion. Um, I don't know if you, how anyone else feels, but that's. Is it so? We got so. Can can someone explain to me the process of of inquiring for bids? How does that? How did that happen? Is there? Can we bring it back to see if there's another someone else who wants to bid on it or something? How does that work? I don't even know. I can't really speak to the RFP process on this. Yeah, I I wasn't on hand, mm -hmm. but typically yeah. the RFP process is you post it, you send it out, you hopefully get more than one yeah. submittal. Yeah. Typically, you want to try and get three for comparative yeah. bids. Mm -hmm. In this case, there was only one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I can't speak to as to why. Um, do you know if it was bid out to any local designers? I, I do not know. Okay. Yeah. I think sometimes they'll, they'll send out the RFPs to known design consulting mm -hmm. firms. Um, and sometimes they'll put it out on a website that, you know, national firms can have access to. I'm not sure if anybody. Yeah, will I don't know if they utilize one of those. Uh, so I would assume Bernie Romer probably put this out as an RFP. And if we only got one contractor, it means other contractors are just, I mean, this is just for design. This has nothing to do with yeah. construction. Yeah. Yeah. And that's under. And it's a small project. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the problem. It's, 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 it's it seems small. really high for just design. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm not crazy. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to want any more public comment, sure. but I'd just like to voice my um, support for this project. Uh, my grandkids and I meet at, uh, 
have get a grab our breakfast at Paradigm. We can walk right into that space. We don't have to cross Erie Avenue. You know, you talk about Fountain Park. Sure. There are four major streets that we'd have to deal with. We bike there. Okay. Um, I was I knew to Sheboygan a couple of years ago, and I was really disappointed when it disappeared in the fall because I expected, oh, this is fantastic. Look what they've done mm -hmm. with this beautiful yeah. space. And as far as people not being able to get to the church parking lot, I mean, there's plenty of other roads mm -hmm. and accesses. We all drive around different. I mean, it's it's a half a block if you want to go through the alley north, or you can come through that alley that was mentioned to get into that space, or you can, you know, obviously go up to the Michigan or down to uh, to the other areas. So um, the other thing um, that I'm uh, wondering about is. Aside from the price, which I, I'm curious to why, if if they can design a whole thing for the Dillon space for 100 and, or for 260, why is this yeah. one 190? I don't know. Yeah. But um, uh, uh, the other thing I was going to say is this is a fairly small project, mm -hmm. and it could be implemented much more quickly than the timeline and the time horizon that I see for either Dillon Park yeah, or Fountain yeah. Park. And it's a space that we do utilize when I host. Uh, 30 days of biking in April, we, we start there. It's a great space. We get back, it's cold. We can run into Paradigm, get a hot cocoa. Um, it's a fantastic resource for the community. We uh, do bike and walk week there. It's all focused there. There are tons of people down there when we're using it. We've been setting up, we use that green space that was private. I got a, uh, permission to use that uh, okay. for a bike pop-up playground for mountain bike okay. teachers. We had a bunch of kids riding on that. It was so successful. We went to the city, got permission to use, uh, to do eight more in different parks in the city. We had 88 kids show up three weeks ago. We had 48 kids show up last weekend. Huge, huge uh, draw, great opportunity for kids to get on bikes. Uh, so uh, I just like to, again, really re uh, uh, put out my support for the project. I know there's finances and things you have to grapple with, but. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I and, and I've seen in other cities where they've done something like this full time, and all of a sudden the community gets behind it, and they set up like social ice events in the winter. Um, we're proud Wisconsin folks; we we embrace winter, and uh, I, I I can see that becoming a nice space for some of those kind of activities as well. So thank you for the opportunity. What does tabling look like? What is that? We uh, take the table that we can bring back at a, at, a, at a future day at that, correct? Yep, so you would make a motion to table the item. Mm -hmm. No action would occur today. And then it would be brought back on a future agenda. If you wanted to incorporate which agenda it should be included in your motion, you may. If you want to just simply table it, and then it's up to the committee chair to resurrect it at a future time. That's certainly within your right. I move to table this agenda item for a future date. Well, I'll, 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 then we'll go back to discussion. So I disagree with that. Um, and I am not opposed to someday having a nice outdoor area here, but I don't feel like tabling this is going to solve the problem of $189,000 to potentially develop this. And, mm -hmm. and so if we're really talking about this proposal right here and now, we're not talking about the parklet in the future. We're talking about this proposal mm -hmm. right now. I see no point in tailing this. Time is of the essence. If we have a fifty thousand dollar grant, let's let's ditch this, let's file it, oh, I and it. let's let's figure out how we can spend the fifty thousand dollars, and we can readdress this at some point in the future, potentially after we have plans for D Land Park and after we have plans for Fountain Park. I feel like that's the way we need to go. I agree. I take back my thing. <laughs> okay. I forgot it's okay. Purpose. So we're looking for what a motion. I'll make a motion to file. Motion to file. Second. Motion to be seconded. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. What's well, aye? Uh, any opposed? That is, that is uh, passed where it is filed. So we will file it. So a question for you. Mm -hmm. Would it continue to be used during the summertime as is? That's currently yes. Mm -hmm. It will still be used as a summertime thing. We, we, and, we may go back forward with another proposal. Yeah. This is just this just takes care of this just eliminates <laughs> that this just, just files that proposal. The permanent part of it. No, no. no. no the this, bed. This is it's only to bid. approve entering into a contract with this design consulting firm. There would have to be a different document that comes through the body 
regarding a, we would call it a sense of the council resolution where they say, you know, it is council's desire to um, rescind this former sense of the council resolution and to maintain this space in a temporary way or to revert the space to vehicular traffic year round, those sorts of things. This action is just for this single contract. Got it. All right. Uh, move on to number seven, resolution number 50, 24, 25, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract with Ayers Associates Incorporated for the design of the New Jersey Avenue Bridge rehabilitation over the Sheboygan River. Kevin, have us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. um, so in the past, we identified this project of this bridge as having it's not serious defects, but it's defects that need to be addressed quickly. It's still functional, yeah. but it's, it's got problems. Um, you may have noticed the last couple of days, they've been out doing some repairs to the bridge deck. Mm -hmm. um, this contract with Ayers would take us through the design process and have bid ready documents aiming for <clears throat> 2027 construction, I believe. That's when we've identified in in the capital improvement program, we identified 2027 as the year to fix the bridge. Okay. I'm just going to start over with questions on it. Is this going to be very similar to the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge to rehab, or is this not quite as extensive? Or I, I, we don't at this time we don't believe it's going to be that extensive. Okay. This would just be um, probably milling off a portion of the deck and putting an overlay on top of it. But no other uh, it would be, additional, like... Uh, there'd be some other repairs to the abutments and sure. the, um, the, the sidewalk, but it wouldn't be like Pennsylvania Avenue and 14th Street where it got a full new, full new deck. Okay. okay. Um, I'm not critical of you. I just don't know the answer, so I'm just going to okay. ask it. Um, if you know what the defects are already, why do we need to have a designer design and spend the money that way? You know, why don't we just put it out for a bit and do it? Because we're not structural engineers. We don't have the, the ability to approve those drawings. It would take someone that's licensed as a structural engineer to, okay. to do that. Good answer. And, and then they'll do their due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> So you know enough to know that there's, yeah, but you can't. <laughs> exactly. Gotcha. And we don't know, I don't know the detail of how to fix all the little problems. Okay. Come on, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> I know my limitations. <laughs> Any other Probably questions you. about this? <laughs> I guess I would be looking for a motion then. I'll move approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Resolution number eight. Resolution number 51 mm -hmm. 24 25. A resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Ayers Associates Incorporated for the design of Pigeon River Stream Stabilization Upstream of Mill Road Bridge. So, this is another one we identified uh, within the last year or so. Rachel, can you zoom in on the on the bridge to the to the right to the right yeah to the east right down below you there it is it's top left other, other way other. No. there we go, there we go. Yeah. no i turn <laughs> <laughs> so it, it you can kind of see here that the river bows to the the south and then it takes a hard left and goes north before it goes under the bridge. Okay. The fear is, it's well, to it's, out. it's been moving. That, that trying, bend has been to... moving closer to the bridge. Okay. So we need to do something to protect that bridge so we don't, you know, don't lose it. Okay. Um, there's a couple different options. We could put a lot of riprap and kind of armor the side of the bridge or it may be more cost effective to actually relocate the river to be a more direct shot under the bridge. Okay. And that's all within the alternatives that Ayers would provide us. Okay. And again, this would take us to construction 
which is slated for next year. John? This isn't related to the bridge specifically, but just north of that, when you're coming down the hill, there's like water coming out of there that leaks on the road all the time. And I have no idea. I mean, it's through the winter, it's like all year round. And what is causing that? It's probably groundwater. It's probably it's high spring. groundwater. Over it's there. on a hill. Mm -hmm. it's it's yeah, that'll yeah. happen. Yeah, pushes back up. Yep. Even though it's that high above the river, it can still be groundwater. Mm -hmm. And it's coming out of the street, so it's yeah, it's like street panels where it's yeah, straight. yep. It's coming out through that. And that's probably if we can afford it, it's something we look at, see what we can do here. Okay. And yeah, I've noticed that too. There's a lot of water up there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Sure. Just question, how far upstream are you talking about uh, modifying things? Because there's quite a bit of erosion all the way along the bike trail there. In fact, uh, the bike trail is falling into the... Yeah, I think this this is part of that, this too. Is, is this part of that? I too? think that would all come into play. Uh -huh. my, well, especially if you relocate. You know, yeah. my, my best guess is where it's where the tree line starts. Yeah. Is about the, that's probably be about the place we would start realigning. Sure. But okay. that's... But we have to put that. That's, that's, that's what yours is going to tell us. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank uh, you. I guess my other, other question is, is, is that is all all city uh, road that's not, is that, it's not shared with the town? Or? No. Okay. That's our road, our bridge. Our road, our bridge. Okay. <laughs> well, you never know. You can always tell. Because <laughs> I know some things, some things in that area are a little tricky. Yes. <laughs> you know, and when so, you get up to Mill Road, it gets sketchy. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'm looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Number nine, number uh, resolution number 57, 2425, a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with the Tyne Peterson Construction for the construction of the Wildwood parking lot and Kiwanis Park improvements. That's me again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back in December 23, council approved ARPA funds to be directed towards a couple park projects. Um, some of it will be used here for the, the first four or 500 feet of Kiwanis Park Road coming from 17th Street heading east, yeah. not quite to the beer garden. Um, Another portion will be used for the the parking lot over here at the Wildwood softball fields. Mm -hmm. And through the capital improvements, um, concrete pavement repair projects, we're going to fix a lot of the bad panels of concrete within New Jersey Avenue, um, directly adjacent to Wildwood. It was something similar to what you've done, like on 14th Street, where you just take a Correct. panel out. And, yep. it, yeah. and within the part of New Jersey, we'll be putting in a crosswalk <gasps> with bump outs to make it safer. Basically, Great. put it where people are walking from one side to the other okay. with the flashing yeah. beacon signs. Wonderful. Very good. Wonderful. Good. Comments, questions? Yay. <laughs> so, that's, so that's in addition to the parking lot? Correct. Yep, the, the ARPA funds will do the parking lot, and street funds through CIP will do the roadway. Is that going to be kind of done at the same time? Or yes. Okay. It'll all be done okay. November 15th, okay. I believe, is what we put on for completion date. Nice. Guess I'll be looking for a motion then. I'll move approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Next meeting date is August 27th, 2024. I'm looking for a motion. Aaron. So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you.